So what I plan to do is I'm going to have a slideshow going of some of my art, not all of it, but some of my art of, of Meher Baba while I'm talking. And um, there's a lot more art in my books that I'm going to show you. But this is The Diver and the Pearl. It just came out. Laurent at Own Point published it. And the first part is um, the story of the pearl diver, uh, which Baba tells and the everything and the nothing. And then there's some art by a few other Baba lovers, not really very much, just a few. And then more of my art and more of my poetry. So I'm going to read that first. And it's available at Sherryar at Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And then I published this three years ago called Listening to the Bones through um, Sherry Art Press. And uh, this has a lot of Baba art and poetry. And so then I'm going to read those as well. There might be time for more. Um, I don't know. So um, lots more art and poetry in here than what I'm going to share. And uh, hopefully it's not too redundant and that it's enjoyable. So I'm going to do share screen and put on my little slideshow now. Actually, I think maybe I should open. Well, I better do share screen first. OK, so share. And oh, now you all are appearing way over there. And here's my slideshow, which I just learned how to make with um, this program similar to PowerPoint. And I'm going to go to play. OK, so obviously this is not a piece of art. This is a photograph. And I'll keep that up there for a poem or two and then go to the next one. This one is called Life Within the Bell's Ring. Wait to silence the bell. Do not let the reverberation stop too soon. Each strike is a full life that then grows quiet. Allow each sound to complete its exhale until the last tone hums softly to the others. We all exist from the bell's vibrant waking up until its natural conclusion, like ripples in the water. The sound of our lives flow outward till the rings of circles diminish. I am in this outer circle now, praising you who are forever at the center of our true being. Your chime resonates through my life, which is but a pebble in a pond of intersecting circles. Each life is contained within a bell's ring, a simple sound wave in your ocean. You are the bowl that holds all the cherries of me. I offer the sweet juice and sour pits, and you accept both. I am a singing brass bowl, balanced on your fingertips, let me not miss your glance. And this next one is called Daman. Holding his Daman has lifted me over miles of pain. I have ridden this flying carpet made of his soft white sadra, sailed over jagged mountains, his daman wrapped through my fingers like silken talus threads. I have ridden his rainbow leaving worry behind. The hem of his garment is my invisible cloak. The breeze that kisses my face, his hand patting my cheek. His glistening eyes are sparkles in the sea. My beloved's hem supports us all pulls us from trenches where we might fall. In everything, I hold his daman. Battling the darkness. Losing our chi, our vitality, pulled to the earth like crumpling leaves, though wanting to soar, I must rebalance my energy, become a branch with singing birds, unanchor my boat from the shore. New discoveries await. It is not time to lay down in the soft moss. The wind calls my name to rise, patiently to be present and trust. The divine lover within kisses away pain. Supple green returns to my leaves. Nature soothes the torrid mind. Released from its dark cloud of worry, the eternal presence persists. Like a buoyant breeze, it finds places to enter. Although Kali's dance of skulls is at its peak, 
Parvati's equanimity is intact. The earth shakes as dragons rise within men's souls, yet the foot of the divine remains firmly planted upon the earth. Shiva's face is blissful within his fiery dance of destruction. His li he lifts his leg in balance while gently holding down an ignorant demon with his other foot, gracing him to awaken and surrender. This rhythm of dark and light persists and has always been. There was no garden of Eden upon this beauteous earth. Blood and rampage have always mixed with sunlight. Do not despair. The calm lake within you still exists. Let others drink from your abundance. The tree's roots will hold the soil. Even when your branches are bare, do not despair. A flood of love will douse hatred's flame. Tend to the garden within, offering flowers wherever you can. Holy one, I stumble toward you over rocks and my own feet, even though you tell me that the distance between us is only a breath. Longing to return to you fully till there is no more me and only you, I have built a church inside my heart, a mosque, a temple, a place for you. I have polished the walls and cleaned the floors, the velvet chair, awaits your residence. The windows are open. Gift. My life is a chrysanthemum, opening myriad petals of good fortunes. He fetches me an un unbreakable net. I am caught within his diamond gaze. The basket of cookies he has given me, I have eaten them, every one. Be my Dakini. You have invited my pulse into your veins. Once I have put my palm on your forehead, there is no going back. I am integrated into you. Light streams through consciousness. I have given you my own blood sweet as nectar. When you evaporate, you will come to me. This is the immortality so many seek to live forever in me. I carry the pain and happiness of the universe, like bangles on my wrists, colors both luminous and sublime. I am your sister, father, and mother. Your home is in me. The whirling dervishes have nothing on you. They have to whirl to get to ecstasy, but all you need to do is look into my eyes. Looking back on life, where did you bring joy? Where did you leave flowers? It is not a game for the faint hearted, this spiritual task of life. Transcend the mirror mind. Slivers of light are breaking through the muck. Even now, the earth quakes and releases angels. There are no secrets between us. You are in the same room as I am. Listen to my fingers, see their words in midair. Child, you are on the watchtower. Armies and butterflies are both coming. The butterflies will survive. The sweet juice is yours to drink. It is filled to the brim with gratitude. Anoint others with my love. The army of light is near. The stillness that moves mountains is here. grace. That kiss I planted on your forehead thousands of years ago is still warm. You have invited me into every cell and I have accepted. We are having tea together even now. You are the teacup and I am the tea. Sailing in your hand. Find your home within my hand. Your boat sails in my heart, its sea of bliss cradling you. All the sweetness you have known is but a granule of sugar on my finger. 
People think you have a secret. It is the arrow of me through your heart. Painlessly I pierce your innermost being, where I have made my home and garlanded it with jasmine. The silver lining of every cloud exists in me. My hair is a meadow for you to roll upon. Krishna revealed himself to every maiden. Each experienced him fully, dissolving in the flute of his being. I have never stopped playing my flute, and you have never ceased dancing to its tune. What a gift I have given to you. All you wanted was to serve me without expectation of glamorous reward, with only my kiss to keep you going. My love is the energy that moves mountains, yet gentle as a baby's eyelash. I need no offerings or outer rituals. The rose water some pour upon my feet and sweet oranges left beside me are outer manifestations of their love. Yet those of you who love me silently while my arrow pierces your heart, I hear you as clearly as the ankle bells on dancing ants who tenderly circle me. Earthquakes come and go, people are born and die, yet time is unreal when you stand within my hand. Bless you. Call me by any name as the tears roll down your salty cheeks. Alice swam in her tears, her small size overwhelmed by the ocean they'd created. Yet she swam up to a table and reached the key and potion to change her predicament. You too, my love, will do the same. You will swim in my large expanse without being overwhelmed. For I am the key and the potion that keeps you afloat. As you bob on waves and sparkling sun, I have touched all with my love. I am your private tefillin and have drawn an invisible lasso around you, pulling you closer. Come, my love, give up all pretenses of being separate from me. Surrender, breathing joy. You think you are in a boat, but it is only my arms cushioning you against the waves. I cannot drop you from this embrace. If you fell, you would still land upon my lap. Surrender to my love, whose blossom is forever pink. The tarot cards will tell you nothing you do not already know. Oh, precious one, you are a tree that grows from my very own palm. Tenderly, I take you through all that you must experience. Root yourself in me, even deeper. I choose my guests carefully, so accept the invitation to this party. I will let you decorate with streamers dancing in color. All the pearls are for you, my dear. Show me your happy heart. Nothing remains hidden. I am glowing and transforming every fiber of your being as you are born anew in me. Surviving Hades Hold. Do not lose hope as you walk down the scary steps into Hades' realm. You will not stay long. You will receive Persephone's gift and turn back up the stairs. She is handing her secret to you now. There is everlasting beauty in that box. It is agelessness of spirit. There is so much light contained within the small box of you. It streams out in golden strands. Your bright light will guide you back to the Earth's surface, dear Psyche, and you will reunite with Cupid. Not held captive by mortal fears, you have proven yourself again and again by walking through limitations as if they were mere paper ribbons. You are stunning, shining so much light. How can one body contain this? This vastness, my dear, is your home. Receive. My thumbprint is between your eyes, 
having smudged you with my ginormous kiss. You have entered the garden, and the flowers are all inside you now. The call you wear is of my own making, woven in strands of sheer impenetrable love. There are no more roller coaster rides for you, only this rebuilding from within. A divine architect is at play to reconfigure you in harmony with me. I press my finger to your brow and electric waves travel through to ground you and make you a permanent receptor to my love. Let the light we are be what we do. Holding baskets of light like sweet ripe cherries, succulent and divine, I offer them to you. Here, have another, there are plenty. Spit out the pits and grow new trees. Let the light you are be what you do. I carry baskets of juicy, bright tangerines, each one a miracle, each of you a miracle, shining with a thousand warm suns. Warm your cold bones, melt your stiff hearts. You are in charge of your destiny. Do not wait for someone else to unlock rusted gates. This sweet, juicy life is yours. And the last one in this book, Notes to a Pearl Diver. Head first, Aries, you are the diver. Where is the pearl of my grace? Oh, glistening one, it is not far, but you must submerge yourself in my ocean. I am the ancient grandfather calling you to swim closer to me. All else is moving in these waters, but I alone do not shift. Once you drink my aroma, you will never be the same. We will swim together for eternity. Even though your emerald scales will fade, your essence will grow stronger. The pearl is illusion, like all the rest. It's only a symbol, a picture to hold. Let go even of that and become foam upon my beach. So I give you a chance to take a breather and me to see what time it is. Oh good, 626. So shall I continue with the ones from the other book? Are you okay? All right, I'm going to, because you're all on mute, so I can't hear anything. So here we go. At the abode. You kissed my heart and it burst open petal by petal, pouring your sun like butterscotch rays of penetrating light. You are a hummingbird who flutters near. If I am quiet, you will land on the smooth branch of my rib and I will hear you with the ear of my heart saying, with each prayer to be worthy, the soot falls away. Desiring nothing but me and to please me, the sun burns off what is unnecessary. Each time you invite me into your heart, I move a little more of my furniture in and your furniture out. Pretty soon, you won't even recognize the place. A thimbleful. The soul weighs the same whether baby or old person. So let your full weight fall upon me. Collapse into my arms and I will catch, hold, and carry you with ease as I always have. Your soul rides in a sailboat, not a tugboat. Release your troubles into the water like scattered ash. Become weightless again. Listen, my love, the soul weighs less than a pea and is made of breath, touched with love's fine caress. Nothing heavy should hold it down. All you need is a thimble full of me to be made of light. This instant. You can come to me right now, this instant. Let down your shield and let clarity reign. There is a highway between our hearts, pulling us closer until we dissolve in mystical union. This is mystic marriage, when you take me into your heart. You have come so far that the wings are just symbolic now. You can fly without them. Bring more bliss into the world. Mirror my ocean to those you love. Shed all veils that bar you 
from truth. I am the drink for which so many search, the balm that heals all ills. You have booked passage on the mystical path. It is a plane of consciousness. Take the hand I offer. Leave this self of mind and luggage behind, for this is a weightless space that I invite you into. The mind empty of worries is able to enter. The baggage of thoughts you carry will not fit onto this plane. Come to me now, dear one, for your place has been reserved for eons. The Soul's Kaaba. It is the pilgrimage of the heart that matters. Circle the Kaaba of your own soul. The song of the Mason is your own voice called from the minaret of your own body. Wrap yourself around me the way a Jew wraps tefillin around his hand. Allah and Elohim are one. Shalom and Salam mean the same thing. If you cannot recognize me in the other, how can you see me in yourself? This garland you place around my neck, I am placing around yours. This garden. How did this garden grow inside of me? Why do some seem so parched? Can you not fill their cups too? Was it just asking that you came to my door? You brought your watering can and your bright big smile. I asked you to water my neighbor's garden too and you said, no, they didn't ask. Oh friends, the request is what invites the beloved in. Occupy Baba. When I crush the jasmine in my hand, the fragrance remains. Do not grieve the green bud self that has matured into leathered leaf. For now, you can hear me when I whisper, we are all God bright and beautiful. We are all him old and frail. Was the perfume any less in the later years? To live your life in my hand, to stake your tent upon my palm. The aroma is never far. You ride upon the dragon's back and do not know it. Someone should hold a mirror to you to see me sitting on the steed beside you. No separation. The garden of Eden lies in your own heart and hell is in someone else's head. A guardian of the gate, you stand at the threshold, inviting others to step over and into another way of seeing, a tour guide who points out the divine. When you live in that place where everything is God, the step disappears. No separation between what is God and what is not. With the sweetest hands, I offer this nectar to you. Not by coercion can anyone drink this but through desire to shed all that once was and to come fully into your own garden where I greet you continuously. Kiss it awake. How can I possibly go back to sleep when you have kissed me awake? I feel your fingertips brushing my shoulder, adjusting my viewpoint saying, don't settle. You must reach your potential or you will have to come again. Live this life as if it were your last. Turn your light on to its full brightness now. You can ride on my whisper. Feel it all around you. The filigree of the boat you ride in is my voice. Where they all wonder where my voice went during 44 years of silence. It went into building boats that you could all ride in. Miracle. Everything is ephemeral. Love alone is real. Why would I give you pearls and rubies when the essence of flowers is all that matters? If you seek mansions, it is just more walls for me to break down. The seed that I once planted in your heart has grown to a tree filled with prayer flags. I am the breeze that blows each flag. 
despair and hope. The news weighs me down like a wet wool blanket, a dream that I am trying to climb out of. It's a thick oppressive slumber, an addiction that drenches my spirit and puts out my flame. How can I call the troops to rally with joy when I cannot find my own? When nothing seems worthwhile, how will we climb out of this current state? Like a dark cloud growing ever wider, prayers cannot pierce the heavens. The world feels like a sinking ship with our country at the helm. Do not despair, my dear. The inner world remains a refuge. Seasons continue to change. Green tendrils always return. Come back to the breath and the present moment. Do not abandon ship. You are passing out life jackets even now. The mountain energy is great within you. The streams of water are your blood. Nourish yourself with light echoing deep within you. The invisible thing called love holds up the planet. Rumi and Hafez sit beside you, Rabiah behind you, Mirabai before you. So many poet saints are whispering, give them voice. Poetry is part of the boat that will save the world. Each line is a life vest to keep someone afloat. There is a caged bird in your heart. Open the door and let her fly out. You were born for this time. Your calling is upon you. There is no separation between nature and humanity. The tendrils of your veins are connected to leaf and vine. Your laughter is the babbling brook. Child of the heavenly gate, you have kept your wings folded for long enough. Unzip the featherweight cloak that hides your light. Today, today the universe calls for your full self to emerge. We are legions rooted in the brightness of truth and beauty. I exist. I exist in the reverberations of the singing bell. The weight of clouds cannot hold me down. How did earth, air, water, and fire come together to form this body? I exist in the sound of the bird. My breath is part of the world's breath. Though the body is contained by time and space, the traveling soul is not. All the sadness in the world cannot weigh my spirit down, even though a flimsy newspaper will batter me. Yet I remember who I am. I put my hand on the Bible of my heart. I will see through this lens. I exist in the screams of the child and the frightened breath of the mother in the angry boots of the men barking at them and the stern judges turning them away. I exist in the lost lifeboats shredded against rocky shores and in the hungry eyes of villagers too weak to walk. I exist in the powerful men who take away their water and wheat and in the animals killed for display. I exist in people still yet sleeping in the comfort of their beliefs and in the ones who can no longer look away from the madness. I exist in the frightened people who need to blame innocence for their woes and in the suited men that cannot see past their own nose. I exist in the dreams of prosperity and peace for all and in the belief that kindness unites. I exist in the frozen ground now cracking and in the heated earth now rising in the conscious mind and in the unconscious mind. I am holding it all like a crystal in my palm, blowing away the dust. Even though I dwell in that as well, I exist in the closing of your eyes for the final rest and in the wrenching hearts of the mourners left behind. I exist in the blades of grass thirsting for more water and in the ones saturated to drowning. I exist, I am witness and experiencer to your crimes and sorrows. I am comforter and pursuer. You have borrowed my breath for a little while taken a small ladle of this endless ocean. The body makes you separate, but consciousness is wider. If the evil that pervades some could experience this oneness, we would let go their games of separation by class, sex, religion, race. Why fear this oneness? Why?
Mantra. Breathing your name has become my medicine and my mantra. If I lived 100 years, it wouldn't be time enough to circumnavigate the width of your hand. Listening to the bones. The path of love leads to your door. The threshold is the pillow your feet rest upon. I am a tree that has been tapped by you and all of my sap has turned to sugar. I open my eyes and there are crystals in my hands, petals of rose and camellia waft around me. It is hard to believe that you are in the dark hearted ones, yet you must be. Once upon a lifetime, I must have been one too. The pendulum swings from one side to the other. This lifetime I've earned your kisses. You've allowed me to focus on beauty. Unravel the age-old sanskaras that clog my bones. New blood is made with ease and I am willing to release all fear in the kindness of your eyes. How lightly you tap your fingers and toes. Your sweet rose scent permeates my heart and saturates my blood. You make me light enough to sit on a lotus leaf. Listen to the bones, Hanuman. Ram is breathing there, delicately etching his name manifold times on each one until they hum with that name. And you say, release all grasping. I will crush you until only pearls remain. And the last one in this book is called Invitation of the Eternal Partner. Listen. You cannot go away from me. I have pulled the string so close. Forget these gods and goddesses. There is no one here but us. We dance in a silken band. The dance floor is your heart. Like a ballerina on my fingertip, you cannot fall off. Like the deer attached to the finger of a bronze Shiva sculpture, this connection is permanent, cannot be severed by wind or flame. Whether you walk backwards or forwards, you are still equidistant from me. We orbit around each other. I invite you into the flames of my love. Precious and tattered rags are left at the door. Even the thinnest veils that separate us are no longer come, come. So that completes the poetry in the books. There is also the short Diver in the Pearl story. It is 642. I can tell you the story, or I can read three more poems, or I can be quiet, and we can do questions, and Frishte can give us a translation. Uh, what well, maybe, do you say, yeah, Tracy? Maybe let's do some questions. And okay. then if we have time, we can do the story. I think Frishte will not be able to to read her poem because she had to, uh, she had to go. Okay. So does anyone have any questions? Remember to unmute yourself if you do. I would love to know, Marla, um, did you study uh, drawing and painting or did you, were you self-taught? Both. Um, I, um, I studied it in, in all through high school and college, but as far as figure drawing, I'm really self-taught on, on painting people and I'm still learning and learning and learning and learning and learning. Yeah. I think the more art you look at in museums, the more great art, the more, you know, you, you take Absolutely. in whatever you look at and it comes back out. Totally. Yeah. yeah. How many years have you been painting? Um, since I was what little, but it's, um, I mean, I've always, it's, it's been my lifeline. It's been my meditation and my psychological way of never having to go to therapy because my art has been my therapy. <laughs> um, and did you start painting and drawing first or was poetry first? Um, art was always first. I, I guess poetry started like in eighth grade and then I um, sort of let go for a while. And it just turns out that, you know, um, I find I find I have such an abundance of art that I always find ones that'll match poems if I want to put them together in a book. Um, Telly, do you have something to say? Well, I was just on your poetry is uh, uh, very powerful uh, and I feel like it's inspired. I was wondering what your process is 
how the idea for a specific poem comes to you, or is it is it stimulated by an image or what? Thank you. I basically um, I I have a little meditation place with a photograph of Baba. In fact, it was the colored pencil drawing that we just saw a moment ago, but it's a black and white photograph from 1964 Pune Darshan. And I just sit down and I look into his eyes and then the words just come to me and I just, everything, nothing gets edited. I mean, I just write it and it's done and, um, and I go and share it. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. You're Carla, when you, um, <clears throat> as all artists do, no matter what their medium is, when you find that you are um, experiencing a, a block of some sort, a creative block, what do you... What do you do to kind of retrieve that? Is, is it the same process to look in Baba's eyes and sit with Baba? Um, I ask him for help a lot and he'll tell me, he'll be like, no, that little glint in my eye is a touch of bright white yellow. It's not pink. It's not, you know, he'll tell me what, what color to make it, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm too lazy. It's like, oh, but I already have this color out. And it's like, no, 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 go make the new color, you know? So, um, so it's that or if I'm really frustrated, I'll go for a walk in nature um, or go do something else for a while, something easier, like play with a collage. Yeah. Um, and which do you find more difficult, uh, drawing and painting or poetry? Um, it depends what I'm doing. Poetry, is, poetry just comes. I mean, I'm not, a st I mean, I took some poetry in, in college, but I'm not a or I never thought of myself as a real poet, people who work on them and work on them. It's like, so, um, so that's just, that's just an expression. But, um, but, but drawing Baba can, that little tiny, that drawing I just showed of, um, you know, the little colored pencil drawing, I have it right here too, but I can't really show it to you because it's over there. Anyway, um, I mean, there's, it, this drawing is this big and I've, I've spent like at least six hours on it. You know, it's like, oh, it's just that line's a little bit this way. I mean, and the thing is, I mean, his face is as big as my thumb, you know, but it's like you keep seeing more things too. So that's um, definitely challenging. Collages are easy. If you go to my website, I've got like a lot of collage work and Baba collages too. But the portraiture is definitely the sneakiest, trickiest, because you know what he does. He he hides, he's like, aha, here I am. Ah, can't catch me, he plays hide and go seek and he runs away. So you have to get him, I had you and I put one line there that was the wrong color and now you went away. And so it's, it's very fun um, to play with him that way. And two were some of your influences in painting. Oh, well, it's changed, um, but it's, um, I love the uh, Pahari miniatures from, I guess from like the 1700s India, the Krishna Radha little um, gouache paintings um, that I first saw when I was maybe 19 years old, I think, uh, 20. Um, I love the Inuit um, uh, prints, uh, like of, of um, seal women and things. And, but before, earlier I loved Gauguin, I loved Van Gogh, I loved Marc Chagall, I grew up on Georgia O'Keeffe um, mm -hmm. and, I, I love Hans Hoffman. Um, Kandinsky is my most favorite artist, probably. I love Kandinsky. So it's, you know, I, I feel really fortunate that I can just drink these artists up and then, you know, learn from them. So really, I, I think, you know, anyone who looks can learn. Absolutely. Right. That's absolutely right. Yeah. The uh, picture of Baba is staring out the door of the lagoon cabin. What's the dimension of that picture? Oh, that's little. That's uh, done with uh, Karanda Ash or water soluble crayons. So um, they're crayons that you can either dip in water and play with, or you can draw with them and then add water. So I brought that to the center one day and you know, he says, I never leave. So I've got, I have one of him at the boathouse and then I, uh, which that's the one I have. That, the one, the, the lagoon cabin one I traded with Max Reeves. So he has that one now. But um, the problem with those is if you're out in the sun, they tend to melt, so, like oil pastels as well. Mm. So you paint small and large. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, which do you prefer? Um, well, small is um, more intimate. I love doing large oil paintings. Um, that one of, of the women Mondali at Baba's tomb, that's a, 
That's, I think that's bigger than this one even. Um, but where do you put them all, you know? Poetry small, put them in a book, put it on a shelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, what I like better, your poetry or your art, Marla. It's both, both are very uh, entertaining and charming and, and uh, soul satisfying. I love Thank your you. use of colors and your use of words and I'm very impressed. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. If no one has any more questions, then we have time for you to, um, to, to talk about the story or to read the story. Okay, so some of you know this story. In the Everything and the Nothing on page 20, um, there is the um, story of, by Hafez, Let's see if I can go find it. There it is. And Hafez just says, it's just a couple lines. He says, when I became a lover, I thought I had gained the pearl of the gull. Foolish, I did not know that this pearl lies on the floor of an ocean, which has innumerable waves to be encountered and great depths to be sounded. And then, so Baba quotes that, and then he um, expands upon it. And here's what he says. In the beginning, the seeker of truth is like a man who, having heard that a priceless pearl is to be got from the depths of the ocean, goes down to the seashore and first admires the vastness of the ocean and then paddles and splashes about in the shadows and intoxicated with this new excitement, forgets about the pearl. Out of many who do this, one after a while remembers his quest and learns to swim and starts to swim out. Out of many who do this, one masters swimming and reaches the open sea, the others perish in the waves. Out of many who master swimming, one begins to dive, the others in their enjoyment of mastery, again, forget about the pearl. Out of many who practice diving, one reaches the ocean bed and grasps the pearl. Out of many who practice, I'm sorry, out of many who get hold of the pearl, one swims back up to the surface with it. The others stay stuck on the floor, gazing with wonder at the pearl. Out of many who swim up to the surface, one returns to the shore. This one is the perfect master, the Qutub, if I'm saying that right. And he shows his pearl to the others, the divers, the swimmers, the paddlers, and so encourages them in their efforts. But he can, if he wishes, cause another to become the possessor of the pearl, without that one having to swim, learn swimming and diving. But the god man or avatar is the master of masters, the Qutub al-Aktab, and can give possession of the pearl to any number he likes. The Qutub is perfect perfection, but is circumscribed by his office in regard to his help to men and women. The avatar is beyond, beyond limits of function, his power and the effects of his power are boundless. The absolute perfection of the perfect master is the same as God-man's. The difference between them is in the scope of their functioning. One is limited, the other is unlimited. So I've been familiar with this story for many times. And about 20 years ago, I made colored pencil illustrations that took me a long, long, long time. These are small, these are like actual size. And I mean, each one is like, you know, probably a week of work. And I simplified a sentence on each story and I made, I made this story. And what came about is um, I shared it recently on Facebook or something. And Max Reef said to me, oh, maybe Laurent at own point would like to make it into a book. And so I contacted Laurent and Laurent said, well, yeah, but it's only 12 pages long. So why don't you invite some other Bala lovers to make art about the same idea and then after that, um, you can make more of your poems and your art in the book. So it's like, okay, so we've been working on this all summer and just published it. And the other artists in there, Tom Riley uh, lent me two paintings. And, you know, it's interesting because I thought a whole bunch of people would be interested in the story, but um, there weren't that many. Um, Joe DiSabatino has one and Inga, um, Inca uh, Hella Charters has one. 
and my old friend from fifth grade in high school, Mindy Tiberi, who's a transcendental meditation follower, not necessarily a Baba person. She's got a couple. Then Jean Bukotsky has um, uh, one of her pieces, and um, Michael Childs uh, lent me a, a guzzle, a poem. And oh. that's it. Voila. <laughs> The, the painter who has the circle with the clouds around it? Yeah, Mindy. Is she, is she by chance from Atlanta? No, Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, she's still there. It's where, we, where I grew up. <clears throat> we uh, have a few more minutes. If you would, uh, if does anyone have any more, more questions? Otherwise, um, Marla could read uh, two or three. Uh, more poems. Yeah. You guys open to that? I would like that. All right. So these are ones, after we put the book together, these three came once I put the book in, so they didn't get in, in the book. So message two, a pearl diver in times like these. <laughs> it is not us and them, but only us. Some want to play at being crashing waves while unknowingly they are part of the ocean. Having forgotten they are beautiful coral, they become sharp and cut the feet of their brothers and sisters, causing blood to flow in the ocean. The avatar comes in a tidal wave of love, like the Red Sea swallowing armies. Humanity is caught in this ebb and flow, buried in sand, then repeatedly brought back to life each era. You are but palm trees with shallow roots falling down in heavy storms. The diver, though, dips beneath it all in, into an unchanging landscape. If you live on the surface, you will be tossed by the waves. If you remain on shore, they will hurl themselves at you. Only in the depths is the pearl of peace found. You can breathe underwater where equanimity resides. The pearl diver story is a map past the waves of change to fetch and swallow this pearl. The halo is within you, my friend. When you return to the beach, the winds will no longer knock you down, for your mortal coil has been unwound, and the fragrance of my breath is all around. Wow. Thank you. Here's another couple quick ones, recent. Here and gone. Into the quiet land where your voice is ever present, and the echo of the bell softly sings, I give thanks, an ocean of gratitude for blessings abundant. May we live to feel your arms around us again, cocooned in your warm embrace. Your kiss upon our lids invites us to see only you. There is nothing else but you, though the disguises are thick and thin. We are all of us trickles in your very being. You have sewn so many costumes for us. Your silent majesty penetrates them all. Upheavals and daily news are smoothed away when your eyes meet mine. You wear the mask of eternity. Your palace is awash in light. Each of us has been invited to this ball. Some dance with you unknowingly, while others transform into silver dust. And when the palace doors close, you are there to kiss us each good night and take us back into the bedroom of your holy being. Can I just say something? Yeah. Marla, hi, it's Irma. I just love that the sewing of the costumes and so on. Uh, it is just really true, of course, right? And all of that. I'm thinking of uh, things that I have read over the past few years where someone says they have found the pearl, right? And yet from what I know from this story, okay, they haven't at all. They've got something else, right? They don't have that pearl. Anyway, there's that. You're probably also aware of the opera, the, the Pearl Fisher. No, I'm not. Oh, and I'm trying to think who did it. It's one of the famous um, composers, but there's an aria in that that utterly breaks and heals and breaks and heals my heart. It is full of longing. I, I first heard it 
when I was 19, uh, an undergrad in Windsor, Canada, um, the lot by Alfredo Krauss. And I have, um, I have a, a, a CD of that now, but there's something about, you might want to hear that. You might want to hear that opera. And okay, I'll look for it, thank you. Yes, so I, I'm so sorry that I missed much of this. I was given the wrong password. Oh, yeah, they changed it recently. They changed it and they didn't tell us. Minor detail. Yes, <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Tracy, for getting back to me. All yeah, right. I was so glad I saw your email. That was a very bad thing. I'm enough to have a copy of Marla's book already. Mm -hmm. I'll be mailing you copies of my book books tomorrow. Thank you, Irma. Right. So glad Thank you're here. Glad so to read, meet you. Read some more. Read another one. Okay, I've got one last one, and we've got one minute, so perfect. Yes. This one doesn't even have a title. Do you know how many lifetimes it takes to sit in my sahabas? This audience with me is not a bite of toast. It is the whole bowl of cream. Myriad marigolds circle my neck, gentle petals like all of you, living in harmony focused on me. You who have breathed in my abundance have the pearl that so many seek. Peonies and pomegranates. I have painted every one. Soft moss and sharp bark. I have sculpted them, every one. The divine intelligence has many names. O oh, goddess earth and formless one, no doubt about my living truth. Listen, my friend, the world is spinning on my finger, yet I still have time for you. Take solace in my sahabas, the pleasure of my company. Wait for nothing, want for nothing but to please me and be tender with my petals. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Such a nice, quiet audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one day we'll all have to admit that we miss Zoom meetings. <laughs> it's for me.